Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. Today we are going to talk about design and simulation of full wave semi control rectifier. This is a circuit diagram. One of the major differences with respect to full wave fully controlled rectifier is that it, it contains two diodes instead of thyristors. Uh, one of the reasons of having such a configuration is that uh, you don't have to spend for additional thyristors. The cost of thyristors is much higher than that of a diode. So having this uh, circuit reduces the overall cost of the circuit. So that's the reason for inventing such a type of configuration. Additionally, uh, if uh, a compromise has to be made with respect to control and the cost, you can use such a configuration the next uh, step is to get into the design portion of it uh, these are the assumed parameters in our design so the first step is to determine the average value of output voltage which is given by this formula uh, one of the commonly made mistakes with respect to steps is that uh, uh, vm is should be substituted as 230 into root 2 so be careful with this step second step is to determine the rms value of output voltage uh, with the application of this formula we'll be getting a straightforward answer uh, the next uh, important uh, thought process that is involved is in matlab you don't have uh, uh, the firing angle to be entered in degrees so you have to enter it in terms of seconds so how do you do that is uh, a big question uh, the frequency uh, according to Indian standards is 50 Hertz so the reciprocal of it will give you the time period 0 0.02 seconds so every 360 degrees corresponds to 0 0.02 seconds that means 180 degree corresponds to 0 0.01 seconds therefore every degree corresponds to 5.55 into 10 power minus 5 seconds so if you are uh, sub substituting it for 30 degrees then you will be getting 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 you can try it for different firing angles as well uh, by entering appropriate values uh, in seconds so let's get into matlab let's get started all right here we are this is a simulink library browser uh, click on that uh, we need to place all the components that are required according to our circuit diagram so the first step is we need an ac voltage so search for it um, and get that you need a power gear block this is one of the most important block for the simulation to run so add this block we also need a voltage measurement port so add that block as well uh, we also also need a, a thyristor search for thyristor you will be getting it over here there is thyristor bridge available as well but since we are uh, doing it for semi controlled uh, we will use thyristor separately add this block and once that is done we need a diode so search for diode you will be getting a, a diode at the bottom over here so add this block uh, we also need a, a series RLC branch so add that block as well uh, we can later convert it into a resistive load or an inductive load according to our requirements so once that is done uh, we also need a pulse generator block uh, to trigger the thyristors that is used in the circuit so add this block um, we also need um, a display to display the magnitude of output voltage and not uh, the sign of it so be very careful with that step uh, add scope in order to display the output waveform we also need to measure the mean and rms value so search for mean you'll be getting both so one of the most uh, commonly made mistakes with respect to rms value is we are not supposed to choose this one this is used for a different purpose scroll down right at the bottom you are supposed to use this particular rms value add this block and uh, for mean we are supposed to use this block so once that is done um, i guess we are uh, uh, good enough to get started with the amount of components that we have we have a pulse generator let's arrange this according to the positions that they are supposed to be so once uh, we have them uh, ready we can get started with the connections this is the power view block this is the ac voltage source though so rotate uh, the thyristor in the upward direction uh, one of the uh, not at all required uh, ports is uh, measurement one so disable that and then uh, do it for diodes as well this is not required for our purpose rotate this as well so copy these two together uh, just to reduce uh, steps and paste it right across it now let's connect this in the form of a bridge um, so that um, the circuit diagram can get started off with and uh, we can start off with entering the parameters as well once we have the circuit ready so uh, we are supposed to enter the supply voltage uh, so let's double click on the supply voltage uh, one of the commonly made mistakes over here is we are supposed to enter 230 into root 2 so that is 325.26 uh, volts so be very careful with the step and the frequency is 50 hertz in our design choose that 
the pulse generator um, block is the most important uh, parameters that are supposed to be set up so uh, we are doing it for half cycle so 0 0.01 seconds is the appropriate time period uh, the phase delay according to our design please to refer to our design procedure we'll be entering 1.665 into 10 power minus 3 that corresponds to 30 degree pulse width can be 5% it does not have a huge difference in this at all so uh, we're not uh, triggering uh, in case of a uh, uh, rectifier but if it is a DC to DC converter we'll be using different switches and the complication starts from there so we'll be connecting the load across this portion um, double click on this and choose resistive branch and its values supposed to be 10 ohms select that once that is done um, we need uh, the voltage to be measured across the load so connect it across the load we can directly get the output voltage uh, these are the mean and RMS value block one of the most important steps is to double click on them and change the fundamental frequency to 50 Hertz because it's not in synchronism if it is in 60 because the supply voltage is 50 Hertz according to our circuit uh, if you're not doing this change uh, what happens is uh, you will not be getting the exact value of output voltage so be careful with that we need another display block just copy paste it appropriately you will be getting it connected across the display screen the output can be measured across uh, uh, the voltage output to the scope connecting it to the scope as shown um, and we'll be triggering uh, the thigh resistors in this fashion so that's it uh, with respect to circuit diagram uh, let the simulation time be in one second uh, because these are static loads so click on run as you can see uh, you are getting uh, approximately uh, the voltage that is close to our design so let's double click on it and uh, check the output waveform let's zoom in so here you can see this is the output voltage that we are getting as you can see uh, there's no negative voltage uh, that is appearing across the output you only have positive voltage um, according to the configuration in which the circuit works so this is one of the most important steps uh, with respect to the output voltage waveform that we have and once that is done um, one of the major differences like uh, one of the major deviation with respect to um, our design is that you're not getting the exact values of output voltage this is because these are not ideal switches you have internal resistance you have number resistance you have forward voltage drop so that's the major difference in MATLAB compared to any other simulation tools um, so that's it for today if you have any questions please do uh, type down the questions in the comment box below uh, if you like this video please do like it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thank you